Hey everybody, welcome to this video series on book marketing with Miss Honoré Quarter, and we have a special guest today, Frappuccino. Frappuccino, <laughs> yes. Can All we right. get the tail? Yeah. <laughs> get a shot of the tail. We've been waiting for her to be over it, but she's not over it. She wants she's to be in my it. lap, so. So Frappuccino is world famous for her tail. Her tail will pop up in the corner of screens during during videos. And we always laugh because- All the time. We know what's happening. Um, <laughs> people that have never met Frappuccino are probably like, what's that? And uh, let's say we've joked around and said it's a boa. We've said it's been um, just a random cat. <laughs> yeah, just, just regular random. Yeah, but she's sweet. Yeah, she's Look at her. She's like, can you put me down so I can just, can you just pet me? I don't care what you're doing. She's, so anyway, what are we talking about? <laughs> total furball. I love it. Um, so we're on That's chapter really eight. And awesome. in the last video, we talked about going wide or being exclusive with your distribution. Yeah. And immediately following that in the book, so people are wondering what I'm looking down at. I have a copy of You Must Market Your Book here. The course version of this or the uh, related course is Book Marketing Mastery. Yeah. So much better mention than my last one. Um, and we're on page 86. So if you start on page 86, there's literally three pages of items under other cool book marketing ideas. And um, it's a total of 13. And we're going to do a pretty quick run through these 13. And Honoré mm -hmm. is going to give us her awesome author insight. So the first is book talk. Oh, before I get started, hold on. So her preceding paragraph reads, just as your distribution strategy will affect your book sales, there are countless creative ways to sell more books, and some of them will be for an incredibly high profit margin. Great hook. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, great hook. I, do, I, I, I might be a writer. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm like, man, other cool book marketing ideas. What's that? And then I read that paragraph, and I'm like, oh, I've got to read these. I've got to know these 13. Yeah. So the first on your list is book talk. So can you pick that one apart for a sec? Well, book talk is a part of TikTok, mm -hmm. and I think that it's being locked out of different places. I know I heard today, as of this recording, that uh, Wyoming has blocked TikTok and India, Montana, Tyre, right? So Montana. Yeah. What did I say? Wyoming. Okay. Same place. I'm not going to say same difference because we will get all of the hate comments. Yeah, direct the hate. This I know way. Wyoming <laughs> and Montana are different places. Both beautiful. Nevertheless, never. Yes, both beautiful. But Montana has blocked TikTok and India as a country has blocked TikTok, which interestingly is why shorts are doing so well on YouTube hmm. in India. So very nice. Moving on to book talk. Book talk is the book arm the book marketing arm or the book uh discovery arm of tiktok and it's actually one of the reasons colleen hoover who i think has like at any given time between three and eight of the books on the top of the new york times bestseller list she is just an incredible fiction author traditionally published indie published she wrote a book called verity which is fantastic page turner um, along with many, many, many others. And she started doing videos on book talk in, uh, during the pandemic and became really, uh, well-known and famous. And it is for someone who wants to read a chapter of their book or a few pages of their book, or wants to create little short videos for book talk. I have done exactly this many videos on TikTok in my life. And this is how many videos I'm going to do in my life on TikTok. Um, just because it's not interesting to me, it doesn't meet, you know, my criteria for effective book marketing for me and my books. Right. Um, but it is, it's number one, because it really did put Colleen on the map and it has put many other authors on the map and a lot of other authors swear by it. They say it's one of their, their favorite ways to connect with readers. Right. And, um, you know, equivalent to, uh, or not an equivalent to, but a related uh, approach, because I don't see it in the, in the, in the list, I can talk about it in relation to book talk um, are things like you mentioned, uh, YouTube shorts and on Instagram reels. So 
if you like the book talk approach and you want um, kind of like uh, parallel um, opportunities without accessing TikTok, you can look at YouTube Shorts or you can look at Instagram Reels. God bless Colleen Hoover. That's all God I got. God bless say. Colleen Hoover and also Facebook Stories. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think there are a lot of different applications and opportunities for video. Amazing. Yeah. All right, cool. So number two on your list is a free gift with purchase. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so there are some people that add in, if you buy a book, then you get something else with it. So you can do everything from a bookmark to a coffee mug, to a t-shirt, to a ball cap, a book bag. I went to a book uh, launch it wasn't a sign. It wasn't a book party. It was at a bookstore. It was author was on book tour and came through. And so if you bought the book, you got the book bag and a hot mug of something because it was a little cooler temperature. You got to go on the Airstream that the author was using to travel around the country, get your book signed. There was other merch in there, but you got, you know, the free gift with the purchase was the book bag and the warm mug of something delicious. Isn't that so awesome? there's all kinds of things that you can give people when they purchase your book, which are fun. And it's right. merch and merch is fun. Insert edit here. <laughs> Hold on, bring Ella with you. <laughs> what oh, happened? I went Ella bust up in here like she was owning the place. <laughs> Did you hear, I didn't the door? hear anything? No. Oh, that's amazing. Dude, she she like took all 90 pounds of herself and just threw it at the door. Okay, well, I'm going in. She was like, boom. <laughs> I'm going in, dad. I'm going in. <laughs> and then when she came running in, I heard like the kitchen's like rolling. So anyways, all right, my Thanks. mistake. Okay, so um, sorry about that. I'll have, I'll have a little editing to do here. Let me know if you want me to exchange Wyoming for Montana, by the way. <laughs> I don't care. I think it's fine. Okay. I think it's fine. I'm not that picky. Okay. So number three on your list is another gift option. And um, that takes number two, which was free gift of purchase to the next level. So you say yeah. in the book, let's take the above one step further. Very often institutions, including schools, don't have a training or speaking budget. Yep. Know that very well, but they do have a book budget. And that is like a light bulb yeah. moment. Is it? Tell me why. I love that because you we you know we automatically assume that the school budgets are so tight because they really are they're really tight um but i don't think people that haven't worked in in a in a organized um, school district or at a university know exactly how the budget works for schools and that they actually have money set aside to invest in books for the school system so can you talk a little bit about how um that is is it works in regard to being a gift option of course. So there's the option for uh, providing books that could be used as curriculum or providing books that support initiatives that are going on within the school. So specifically during the pandemic, there were ESSER funds for social emotional learning tools. So if you have a book that could be considered a social or emotional learning tool, books had budgets to uh, or schools had budgets to buy those specifically schools or school systems had uh, or districts, school districts had money to buy and still may have some of those funds to buy books or curriculum or books that could be turned into curriculum or vice versa. And so you could be selling books to the schools. And so one of the one of the books that I had helped to create, I'm the co-author of the Miracle Morning for Teachers and the co-creator of the Miracle Morning series, there were a lot of schools that wanted the Miracle Morning for Teachers and the Miracle Morning Art of Affirmations uh, positive coloring book for adults and kids and bought a lot of those books to support teachers and students in, with their social emotional learning uh, during that time and still are using funds, grants, uh, those sorts of things for those types of books. And so one of the things I did was just create a course uh, for the for teachers based on the Miracle Morning for Teachers. And I did it actually within a school district. And so um, I had a nonprofit agency buy some of the books and asked me to teach a course, which was then recorded. And I turned it into an online course 
which is for sale, but I do give that course away to teachers. And so I've just made it known if you're a teacher and you read the Miracle Morning for Teachers, just send me an email and I'll give you access to the course. But I do sell some of those courses on occasion to people who just stumble upon the course and, and want to get it. I love that. And you were gifting your book to the school system to help the school. And then people yeah. were finding the book so helpful that the school system was placing orders for bulk orders of your book, right? Yes, yeah, still and still. Love still it. are. Yeah. Love it. So if you have a nonfiction book or even a fiction book that could be um, that relevant to the school system, it's a great opportunity through gifting and donation to um, give them exposure to your book. And then, and then there's a lot of, obviously there's a, there's a, um, a follow-up involved. Um, a lot of follow-up. Right. And to, to engage And them. patience. It's not a fast, you know, it's not a fast process generally speaking, but if you're patient and you stay in it, if you can prove relevance and efficacy, then you have stand a really good chance of them purchasing your books directly from you. And that that's awesome. It's a really wonderful great. way to make an impact for sure. Excellent. Yeah. Um, okay. So number four on your list is guest blog posts. And it's kind of self-explanatory to a lot of people, but um, I don't, I don't want uh, uh, people to underestimate the power of being a guest blogger. So it could be uh, that that someone like Honoré and I, who work closely together um, on a business, would be guest blogging for each other's individual businesses. It could be that you know someone that owns a business and you guest blog for them, or vice versa. But it should be someone that's obviously you have something relevant to say to yep. that audience that attends that blog, right? Yes. Or there are also platforms. I blogged for a really long time for the Huffington Post. Right. Oh, okay. So you can be a guest blogger or you can be a resident blogger right. um, or and, and this is another opportunity here is to do articles. So I write for Indie Author Magazine. I submit an, a monthly article that goes into that uh, specifically around prosperity mindset and mindset for authors. So that's my that's my approach uh, specifically for that publication. But that could could also go on to other uh, blogs or publications for people who serve authors or writers. That's so you want to just think about like, what's the, what's one of the ways that your knowledge and expertise could be used by someone. And I just want to give people some insight as well. And that is to think, you know, before you approach someone, you want to ask them or, or even look like, when was the last time they had a guest post on their site? If they've never had one, they probably don't want one. Right. Right. But if they have them, then you can say, here is an article that I've written somewhere else. You can, you're welcome to use it, or I would like you to use it, but this would be what it would cost. Something like that. You want to open up a dialogue and, and start a relationship. Excellent. I've done a little bit of that for um, um, when I was uh, writing guest articles and blog posts in the engineering space uh, for, for partner businesses. Yeah. Um, so if you're a consultant or a coach and you work with the B2B market, it's a great opportunity. It's an easy, um, way to get your foot in the door, uh, with continued exposure to those other companies, audiences by being yeah. a, a, a guest blogger. Um, and, uh, I've done some of that with Thinkific and be doing some more of that in the future. So yeah. I love that stuff. If you like to write, it's great. If you're, <laughs> if you're watching this, you probably do. So, yeah. um, talk to me about Quora, you know, I've never used Quora. Quora is an interesting uh, site and it's been around for a long time and it is a place where experts can answer the questions that people have. So anyone can ask a question and then experts can go in and answer it. And it's funny because if you sign up as a Quora expert, whenever there's anything remotely related to your expertise, Quora will actually send you an email and say, do you wanna answer this question? Do you wanna weigh in on this? It's fascinating takes a lot of time, but it can be, you know, just an interesting way for you to market your book. Because if you've written on a topic and you've written about monetizing your book with a course and someone's like, Hey, what are the reasons I should turn my book into a course? Or does anybody have any expertise on that? Or does anybody know anybody, you know, is there any book available on that? You could pop in there and say, well, here are the benefits and here's a book that I wrote on it. And here's a course that I have on it. And, and that's what it's for. So it really provides an opportunity for that, which is cool. I love that. Um, something that's a little less formal, but um, obviously um, probably more popular is book clubs, right? So 
I love that you have book clubs on here, um, local and online book clubs, and um, that the readers just love being able to meet the authors of the books that they're reading. They do. So. I've probably done a dozen total book clubs, <clears throat> like where I've gone physically and in person, been to book clubs where people have reached out to me and said, we want to read your book this month or this quarter, whatever that looks like. And then would you come and, and sign books and be here? And it's always so fun because people show up with their books highlighted and, and tabs and stickers and questions. And it's really a fun experience. I've done probably another two or three dozen online over the years. And it's really a fun thing. You are not limited to existing book clubs as an author. You can also form a book club and create a read along for your book as well. So when I did the successful single mom book series, I created a, a read along um, book club on my blog. So I would say, okay, this, this, you know, period of time. And I forget what it is. I think maybe it was two weeks, like this two weeks, we're going to read these two chapters and then we're going to get together and we're going to talk about it. And so you are, you can be the driver of the bus too. You don't need to just be a guest passenger. You can actually drive the bus on your own book club. That's pretty cool. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, that is really fun. Um, that's different than readings, of course. You know, book club, you're there as, a, as, a, as an author of a book that the club is, is um, reading. Um, but when you're um, delivering a reading or you're involved in a reading, you're actually going there and reading your book aloud at an event. You see this a lot at conferences. There were a lot of readings at the conferences I was at last week. Um, and some of these are um, corporate book clubs that invite authors to come do readings, correct? Yes, yes. So you can, I went to um, Fortune 100 company in, in Silicon Valley and did a reading and they broadcast it all around the world. So there were people all over the world at all times of the day and night that were, you know, they were like, okay, we want you to read this section and then we're gonna talk about it, which was a lot more formal. Um, you can also do a reading at a book store. So if there are special local and indie bookstores really like to have authors come in and, you know, order books in advance and, and have people come and sit and, and you'll have someone interview you. You can read a section or someone can read a section to you and you can talk about it. There's no one way to do it. Just all fun. I love that. Yeah. I, I can, I, I love, I love seeing that in the, like with the kids in the fiction space, children's books. I mean, it's a big yeah. promotion it's a big tool. Deal. Yeah. In children's books. Really cool. Um, but I never thought about doing that in a corporate setting for mm -hmm. B2B as a nonfiction author. So you just gave me a massive idea. It's like, okay, thank you, Honoré. You're welcome. I'll be here all week. Um, something that's gotten uh, easier to make, more popular, or at least more prominent are book trailers. Um, yeah. And you, your first uh, sentence on book trailers is that you've seen a lot of cool of book trailers in your time. They aren't cheap to produce if you pay someone, but if you have a film student in your midst or you've got a 4K camera lying around, and you find fussing with some editing software breeze, you can create a fun trailer. And it's just amazing how much better this gets year after year with software advancements. Um, do you um, do you have much experience with running book trailers? I, I do not yet, um, but I, I do not. I do not. The closest I come is now I have a, you know, a, 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 a graphic that moves like a little short, right? That says the book is available and things kind of spin in the background. Yeah, it says now available. Like that's as close as we get to a book trailer. But my books are nonfiction; they're not really telling a story. I think when I get into fiction, I would be far more inclined to produce something that showed in physical short movie form what was going on in my head, like where, what's the setting, what's the character. Do a little bit of voiceover reading, or have a voiceover, you know, professional voiceover with some music. Um, to kind of entice people to read it. But I don't, you know, I don't know if those move the needle. They're just an option. And it could be um, that your book trailer is you reading just a few key sentences in your book or reading your book description and, you know, having some images of the book and maybe a little bit of an interview about you. It doesn't, I think there's one way to do it. There's not one way to skin a cat, although that doesn't sound good. Sorry, Frappuccino. <laughs> about to say she's right behind you <laughs> she's right there she can hear you yeah. <laughs> oh that's fun um okay so number nine on your list is fairs 
markets and community centers. And so in particular, you mentioned craft fairs, farmers markets, and community centers. Uh, yeah. But your opening sentence here is fantastic, which I love the way you start this, because you could have like narrowed right in on one of those and like tried to pull it apart, but you say something that's brilliant. Anywhere there's a gathering of creative people, writers are welcome. Yeah, yeah, right. writers are the cool kids. We're the cool kids. And it's interesting when I go, um, I live near Franklin, Tennessee. And so we were, we went to a, a an annual, um, I don't know, holiday fair or something. And there was a, the local authors booth. So there were several local authors in there and they kind of had their books displayed and they had a, a little sign up sheet. If you're an author and you want to be invited to the, to the things and be in the tent. And it was just really fun. I was completely incognito. I had no books with me. And so I was just like, oh, you guys are authors. That's really cool. Tell me about your book. And of course, that was really fun. But it was right in the middle of this and they got some regular traffic. And so now I'm a part of a Facebook group and I get invited to do different things. But if you're willing to put in the time, and so this is the, this is the, you know, chapter one, how much time do you have, mm. right, to, to put into your book marketing, if you're willing to go and sit you know, there have been times when I have gone and done something that I'm sitting there going, why on earth did I do this? This seems like a colossal waste of time. And then someone will wander up to the table and it will be a life-changing conversation mm -hmm. in one way or another. So I had a life-changing conversation last night when I said to someone, will you, you, do you know that I write books on this topic? And she was like, what? Because they were having a women's conference and they wanted to have someone come in and talk about morning routines. Mm -hmm and being successful based on your morning routine. And I said, you ever heard of this book series? And I'm scrolling through and she's like, what? <laughs> like you might've just solved my problem right now. And so you just don't know that when you're, you're somewhere where there is a gathering of people where the, where the public is coming through, if you just kind of park yourself there. And so that would be craft fairs, and farmers markets where that where people are bringing their crafts and their their locally bottled honey and their squash and their tomatoes right if you if you're willing to go and sit you're going to talk to people and that can be where you get your groundswell of momentum where one reader picks up your book and talks about it and shares it with someone else regardless of genre or topic love that love that yeah it, that one uh, caught my eye when i read the book the first time i was like oh when I saw the title, I was like, farmer's markets never thought about that. And then I realized, oh. yeah, I mean, there's uh there's quite a bit of people. We have one farmer's market in town that's very popular and half the group of people that are marketing there are artists. Yep. yep. Very good. Um, grocery stores. What? Mm -hmm. Tell me about this one. Gosh, you know what? You have a local grocery store or you have a chain grocery store and you're a local author, roll yourself in there with your books and say, I'm a local author. Can can you sell my book here? Because they they buy things. They buy things to resell. <laughs> and in all grocery stores, there's that one aisle that has cards, magazines, books, puzzles, dog chew toys, right? There's that one aisle that has all the things in it. Like, why wouldn't they carry your book, mm. especially if there's a local author section? I love that. Yeah. You see opportunity everywhere. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I might, in my mind, I'm substituting this for something else because I used to work in, in these, but gyms, right? Okay. Yep. Uh, I love that you put in the book, gyms is in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> or are in parentheses, because I want you to consider your demographics. You'd offer to have a book table at your local gym if your book is about nutrition, health, fitness, or any related topic. If you have a money book, management, investing, or debt, you could hang out at a local bank, sign or sell books, and meet prospective clients. So basically, any place that you think your reader would, would go mm -hmm. um, frequently and uh yeah. religiously right like they're going to go to the yeah. bank regularly going to go to the gym regularly yeah. you should be there you should be there and your book should be there and it doesn't take much because being an author is so cool please uh, underestimate this at your peril 
the power of being an author and having that conversation and seeing people's faces light up when they realize that you're an author, they want to talk to you. They've always wanted to write a book. They want to know what that's about. They want to know what your book is about. Why did you write it? And so if you can put yourself somewhere, I mean, if you, if you're, if you've got a book, then probably your local library <laughs> needs a copy of your book. And, and so it just takes a little bit of sitting down and thinking, having some think time to go, where, where could my book be? Where could my book intersect with the best reader for it? Love that. Love it. Okay. We're down to two more. And the last one's probably my favorite on the list, but okay. gift shops, car washes and gift shops in car washes. <laughs> And that's one. That's that's not two. That's one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, independent gift shops. I live in Williamsburg. It's a tourist town. We have gift shops all over the place. Um, yeah. You're you're making me like rethink my whole life right now. Um, <laughs> tell me about what makes gift shops and places like car washes so so good for book marketing. Well, so what's interesting is that that local author thing is really a really beneficial thing because no matter how many local authors there are, there just aren't that many. So there's usually um, a gift shop that is, you know, I live in Tennessee. So there's a, a the Franklin factory and there's an all Tennessee store there. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you're a local author, they have a local author section. If you have a book about Tennessee, if you have a book about ghosts and there's a ghost town, right? Like it, it you can find a gift shop that will take your book, generally speaking, and the more broad your topic or the more special your your topic, if it relates to a specific area or situation, you just want to make the ask, right? If you don't ask, you don't get. So gift shops are one. When I lived in Austin, we lived right by a bougie car wash and I was in there all the time. And they would sell everything. They would sell candles and they would sell jewelry and they would sell coffee mugs and they would sell books. And so I said, well, can I bring in one of these, you know, plastic things and like put my books in there? And they would just buy my books for me. Like every month they would call and they'd go, okay, we need a replenishment. And I would drop them by and we worked out a deal. And so people were coming and waiting for their car to go through. So it would go through the car wash and you could watch it through the windows and then it would go outside and then they would, you know, they would, you know, dry it off and, and finish the inside. And so it would take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, depending on how busy they were. So these people are just sitting around waiting and I would sell a lot of books that way because people would wander over and pick it up and, and then walk out with the book. Wow. So it was just a really fun way. And so then, you know, there's gift shops and then there's car washes, just general car washes that don't have a lot in there. And then the more bougie, the car wash, the more stuff they're going to sell. They get into greeting cards and candles and, and, cookbooks and things like that, chances are they have a local author se section or they'd like to. So you mm -hmm. should definitely just always have books in your car, always get your car washed. Just saying. <laughs> I keep, I keep books in all my vehicles. Um, and it's, uh, Sometimes it's ran, it's completely random. There's a, a oh, coffee random. shop near our house where Tammy and I were having breakfast one day. And um, there were these two professional ladies sitting there a couple of tables away. And the one oh. lady's talking about how she runs a marketing agency. And the other lady is there to talk to her about her marketing agency. And as they're talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, this lady's talking about creative entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So on our way out the door, I get to the truck, I grab a copy of my book, I stick a, a, a business card in it, which isn't necessary if you format your book the right way, but <laughs> I got to get rid of all these business cards. <laughs> so oh, right. okay. I use them as uh, bookmarks, right? So I put it in the book and I hand it to the lady and I said, here, I didn't want to interrupt your conversation here, have a copy of my book. If you are interested in learning anything more about it, just give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, but I think what you guys are doing is great. Have a good day. And I left and I got an email two weeks later. This is a, a business contact I never would have met, right? Just yeah, because. And, and you mentioned coffee shops. Coffee shops. Coffee shops are a great place that yeah. if it's local, they might sell your book. Now I'm not saying the big chain stores, they will not do that. But local coffee shops will very often 
let you sell your books mm-hmm. or the big chains have a newspaper basket. Yep. And one of the things I always do is when I travel, we always stop at all the clean coffee shops, right? You can find them on the map and, and you, right? So you pull in there. And so I would just leave a book, just leave a book in the newspaper basket or leave a book on the shelf or leave a book on a table as I was leaving. And they're kind of like, where did this book come from? But it's like, if you want to infiltrate an area, start planting your book as a seed in different places. You just never know who's going to pick it up and then reach out to you later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have a couple of our local bookshops or or, sorry, coffee shops have a small, um, you know, like libraries. They Hmm. keep they keep like book bookshelves and the books stay in the coffee shop and people can just pick them up and read them. And I was like, pew, 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 just throwing my book in all those places. That's right. That's right. I've done that many, many, many times. Absolutely. Just, just, uh, just be that guy that buys the cup of coffee while you're there. <laughs> I go in, right. can I get a cup of coffee? By the way, I'm a local author. I'd love to donate a copy of my book to the, to the library here. If you guys are cool with that. Yes. And also if you would be interested in stocking them, I'd be happy to give them to you on consignment. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes they, awesome. they're not doing it because they've never thought of it. Sometimes you have to be the entrepreneur that's going, hey, what about this income stream for your coffee shop? What if all the local authors had sold their books here and you took 30% of the sale and bought right. the books at a, at a discount? What would be wrong with that? What goes better with coffee than a book? Yeah. I'm not going to answer that question. Chocolate. <laughs> Bailey's. <laughs> you forced it out of me. All right. Forced it out of you. Yes. Uh, the last one. Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of my favorite fiction authors is Stephanie Bond. And I saw her speak at a conference. She is a traditional and independently published author of romantic fiction, romantic mystery, romantic suspense. And she was talking about her cereal. And I want to give a big shout out to Stephanie and her her cereals that she writes. They're six month cereals. And the first one is Coma Girl, which is a daily six month cereal that was also produced as a podcast. So she took those daily little episodes and had them professionally produced. And so you can find Coma Girl on any podcatcher anywhere. So it's on iTunes, it's on um, Stitcher, like you can find it on any podcatcher anywhere. And you can listen to these 180 episodes, just two to 10 minutes at a time that tell the story in little increments. So if you are prone to writing little bits of fiction, right, in in the form of a serial or um, even like a longer form uh, fiction, like uh, serial or or a true crime podcast, you could even take any of your fiction and break it up into sections or nonfiction and break it up into sections and record it as a podcast. So it's just a different format for your audiobook. Release it as um as a podcast and put it up on um a podcast app and release it that way. So there are all kinds of different ways that you can use audio, not just video, to market your book. And it it would be a unique and interesting thing that while some people are doing it, not everyone is doing it. Everyone is doing an audio book. Not everyone's doing an audio book, but audio books are very common. But is your book in the form of a podcast as an audio book, right? Or in the the form of a podcast based on your audio book with maybe a little extra commentary. Right. Interesting, right? I love it. And yeah, uh, I I can, I can hear the, the, the the pessimists in the room saying well why would i give that away on a podcast you know and it's like you're growing an audience that's going to buy more than that one thing you read <laughs> especially <laughs> if you have a nonfiction book you are the expert at something if you have followed any of our advice or any of my advice about creating a book some kind of con- companion product and a course or a or a speech speaking engagement training coaching program a consulting program, anything like that, someone could discover you through the free book that you put out in the form of a podcast or an interview or a YouTube video or anything else and then hire you. So why give it away for free? Because of what could happen on the upside. And at the very least, it could not result in money for you 
it could just be that you made someone's life better. I think that's pretty cool too. That is pretty cool. Um, and I don't know any readers who hate to get free content from their favorite writers. Nope. Don't know a one. Right. I mean, how cool Correct. is that as a reader to be able to say, Correct. you know, I don't only like this person because they write, but because they're so, um, they're so giving of their art, right? They, they love to share their story and it's not just about making a buck. That's right. So. That's right. Love that. Okay, so that's the list of thirteen other cool ideas um, in chapter eight, and I and I and I uh, love every last one of those. You gave me some really good ideas today because uh, even though I've read the book and I've I've thought about those things, it's a little different when you take the time to um, talk directly with you about what was um, the motivation behind some of those points. And now I got to go make a list of all the car washes and. <laughs> Gift shops, and and gift shops and yeah and there's a lot in your area i okay. want you to put my books in those gift shops and car washes right i mean so that's something you could do too is and not you lucas but you the yeah. watcher the viewer could could do that for your local for your other local friends or your faraway friends who you'd like to help with their book sales as well absolutely well thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us again on you must market your book. You can find the book everywhere you can buy books. And Correct. you can also check out the um, complimentary course to this book called Book Marketing Mastery. You can find mm -hmm. that both on the Empire Builders Masterclass and on honorayquarter.com. That's right. Um, our next video, should you be so curious about what comes next in the series, is going to be yeah. about bulk selling, which is if you're if you're really looking at the economics of books, it can be a game changer, um, absolute game changer. So, um, looking forward to that conversation next, Honoré. Thank you so much. I can't wait. I'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.